Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this uh, is the daily gold chart, and the big question here is going to be: uh, Is this a bottom and a rally? And and it's very hard to say. Now, we do have really strange volume coming in here. Definitely bigger than we've ever seen before, except for maybe this bottom thing here, and then this rally thing. It's bigger now. Uh, but you can see that gold's trying really, really hard to continue this trend. And it, it's above that trend line. There's the trend line there. Um, so we're watching gold very closely because, of course, let's look at silver. Gold is the, the bellwether. Silver is never going to be the bellwether. It just isn't. Gold always leads it. Uh, will that change at some point in the future? Yeah, it'll probably change at some point. Um, maybe when things go towards China or something. But you can see here that uh, silver is still weak uh, compared to gold. But uh, I wanted to take you over to some stories here. I, I hope I have enough time to cover this. There's two important things I wanted to cover. And... Uh, the first one here, I'm going to talk about Trump and this election. Now, you know that I've talked about the election before, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's not what it seems. That's the best way to put it. But I'm personally still trying to figure out what it is not, that it, <laughs> that it does or does not seem. Now, let me uh, give you a summary of uh, what happened to me today. Um, so uh, initially in the car, I heard Glenn Beck and I don't listen to Glenn Beck. I uh, had stopped listening to Glenn Beck as soon as I found out he was a Mormon. And when I found out that Glenn Beck was a Mormon, then I knew he was an agent, an agent of who and what's uh, that remains to be seen, what the connections are. But he's clearly an agent. Now, what was interesting was I heard a ad, and I, I've listened to Beck a few times, and he's incredibly anti-Trump. And he's trying to promote, um, I think it's Ted Cruz. It's hard for me to keep these guys straight, whether it's Mark Levin or uh, Sean Hannity or Glenn Beck. These, these three guys, they're all real agents of who knows who. But uh, what was interesting was that I heard this ad for Ted Cruz on um, Glenn Beck's program. And what was so striking was that they ran it two times in a row, the exact same ad, like a 30-second ad for Ted Cruz. And... Uh, and it's always kind of shocked me, why is Beck so anti-Trump? Because it's almost like a suicidal mission. The The momentum behind Trump, and I'm, I'm not even going to try to predict who or what Trump is, what he represents, but this may be kind of a hint at it. So I'm going to start with this Brother Nathaniel video. Now, if if you aren't familiar with Brother Nathaniel, he is a notorious anti-Semite. It seems like everybody now on the right and the left is an anti-Semite. But this guy is, I think he's an Orthodox Christian. Uh, maybe, uh, I'm not sure, maybe the Russian side, I, I don't know. You can research it. Um, but he's a very anti-Semitic person. And he uh, says the Holocaust was a hoax, etc. But what's interesting here is what he exposes about Trump because he put this out in the summer of 2015. And you can see, well, let's play it and then I'm going to comment. He wrote the art of the deal. Now he's offering a deal to make America great again. That's what Trump's campaign is all about. And the crowds love it. The American dream is dead, but I'm going to make it bigger and stronger and better than ever before. Right? Right? 
That's something Trump says Jeb won't do. I watch Jeb Bush. I think it's pathetic what's going on. His stance on Common Core, he's in favor of Washington educating your children. His weak stance on immigration, he said it's an act of love. I mean, what kind of stuff is that? That's baby stuff. And Trump's no baby. He built a billion-dollar empire in real estate because, he says, he's got the art of the deal down pat. He cuts and shuffles, and when the heat is on, Trump plays the win. Are you considering it all, since you're getting heat from every single direction, is, is there any chance you're, you'll get out of the race with this? No, I love it. I'm bringing, I'm bringing to four and getting a lot of credit for it, lots of different elements that are very important. We have incompetent leadership. We have leaders that don't know anything about negotiating. We're getting killed by China. We're getting killed by Mexico. We are a bunch of very, very foolishly led people. Trump's right. Incompetent leadership. That's why Americans have dropped out of politics, not out of apathy but out of disgust. Trump wants to change that. I tell about the bad deals that this country is making. Mexico, I respect the country. They're taking our jobs. They're taking our manufacturing. They're taking our money. They're taking everything and they're killing us on the border. And Mexico does not like it. So remember this. Don't worry, we'll take our country back very soon. And Trump's all about USA, USA, USA. He's an American exceptionalist. He wants to make America great again, but with the Pentagon at the center. Our military has to be strengthened. We have to be as we need. I mean, we've never been in trouble like this. The world hates us. But Donald, it's because our weak military has wrought so much destruction around the globe that the world hates us. The world hates Israel, too but not Trump. My name is Donald Trump, and I'm a big fan of Israel. And frankly, a strong prime minister is a strong Israel. And you truly have a great prime minister. In Benjamin Netanyahu, there's nobody like him. And there's nobody who could win an election if Jews aren't swayed. Enter Trump's daughter, Ivanka, who's married to Jewish real estate mogul Jared Kushner, who's got startup investments in Israel. No penny anti-marriage here. Ivanka married into the mega-billionaire Kushner family, who stamps a Jewish imprint on New Jersey politics. She converted to Judaism, and Trump's grandkids are Jews. They all keep kosher. Doesn't stop there. Trump's son Eric is married to Inside Edition's Jewish TV producer, Laurie Anaska. Their kosher marriage was sealed under a crystal chuppah. And Trump's got a hoppa portfolio with millions invested in those tech startups in Israel. That's a special bond that can serve him well. For once his anti-immigration and lousy leaders plays out, he'll have to reach into his deck of cards. He's got a Trump card sure to please the Jews. A joker writ large with, I'm a big fan of Israel. Without it, even Trump folds up. So that's Brother Nathaniel. Now, I, I thought I heard him say he is a Jew, which is even more twisted and bizarre. But uh, this this rabbit hole is it goes so deep and it's so strange. Uh, it's it's really hard for me to even keep it straight in my mind. But I'm just going to try to chase this down for you. Okay, so this is uh, the Zero Hedge article here uh, from the 23rd, which is today, and it just came out. You can see here it's uh, Trump dominates new polls. Here are uh, 10 unforgettable images, and you can see here, uh, here's the picture that Trump tweeted about. Uh, Trump wins. I think it's Fox, actually, but you can see here Trump tweets, this is the best reaction shot I've ever seen, lol. And you can see all these Fox News uh, people really sad about Trump winning in South Carolina. I think that's what that that one was, uh, or maybe it was Nevada. Anyway, so let's get back to this ad that I heard. That was uh, it was Dr. James Dobson. And now, if you're not familiar with Christian 
um, radio and television. Dr. James Dobson is a guy who is who runs a huge operation of uh, psychological counseling centers for Christians. Um, it's uh, it's too big of a story to go into, but basically, it's somebody making money off of psychology that claims to be a Christian. I I don't uh, buy into this money making uh, psych Christian psychology nonsense. But anyway, this was the ad that I heard. It was sponsored by Keep the Promise. Now, Keep the Promise, that was something that I noted and decided to to investigate. And uh, Keep the Promise is a pack. And uh, when you do the research on Keep the Promise, uh, it looks like I don't have that link here, but if you go to opensecrets.org, you'll find that Keep the Promise Virtually all of the money that went into Keep the Promise came from this character, Ferris Wilkes. Uh, he is a billionaire fracker, and uh, there have been a lot of exposés on him. Uh, I, I don't have all the articles that I researched, and I don't have time to go into it. But basically, uh, this guy uh, started off as just a small businessman, and somehow he got into fracking, and uh, him and his brother became very, very wealthy, and then they ended up flipping their companies to uh, some Singapore companies um, and got out while the getting was good, and both are about $1.5 billion uh, of net worth. Now, what's so interesting about this, if you look down here... Uh, you can see uh, that he flipped this over to this Singapore company. Company, And you can see this interesting note at the end here. Ferris remains pastor of the Assemblies of Yahweh Seventh-day Church near Cisco. So, of course, that raised a lot of red flags. Now, try to keep this straight in your mind. This is the billionaire who's donating millions of dollars to Ted Cruz to run ads to defeat Donald Trump, who is, according to Brother Nathaniel, a pro-Israel candidate. <laughs> okay, so try to keep it straight in your mind. It gets stranger than ever. So what is this Assembly of Yahweh Seventh Day Church? What is that? Well, you can see from their site, this is the site, it's Assembly of Yahweh, but it, it uh, relocates to this hallelujah.org. And if you click on the About link on this page, uh, you look at the beliefs, and here is this bizarre statement about beliefs. Listen to this. Members revere all 66 books of the Bible. They seek to follow the Messiah, Yeshua of Nazareth by walking in his footsteps, thus they keep the Sabbath, the Passover, and other festivals of Leviticus 23. What Are they trying to be Jews? Choose to eat clean foods and strive to please the author of, quote, the perfect law of liberty, quoting James, inherent in that goal is being good neighbors, quote, after all, one's, uh, says one member, the Messiah said all the law can be summed up in love Yahweh and love your neighbor, Matthew twenty two thirty six. We're passionate about both. I hope it shows. So it gets stranger and stranger. Now here is the Christian Research Institute article. Now don't get me wrong. I have a lot of problems with the Christian Research Institute and certainly a lot of problems with Hank Hennegraaff who was one of the founders of that. But this article is actually pretty good in describing these sacred name movements. And this is called Yahweh is His Name by Bob Hunter. The article first appeared in the Christian Research Journal in 2011. Yahweh groups originated in the 1930s as part of what is known as the sacred name movement. This movement began among some members of the Seventh-day Church of God who were convinced that knowing God's name was vital. By the mid-1930s, quote, several members and ministers of the Church of the Seventh-day, such as Elder J.D. Bagwell, began to use the sacred name 
and promote the cause actively. Out of this movement, numerous Yahweh groups have sprung up over the years. Probably the largest is the Assemblies of Yahweh based in Bethel, Pennsylvania. Jacob O. Meyer, a former member of the Church of the Brethren, started attending a small sacred named Church in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. This led him to start his radio ministry in Bethel. This was followed by the sacred name Broadcaster Magazine in 1968. He founded the Assemblies of Yahweh, reported that affiliated assemblies are located in more than 100 countries. Other groups are part of the Yahweh movement, including Yahweh's Restoration Ministry, based in Jefferson City, Missouri. The Assembly of Yahweh Seventh Day, based in Rising Star, Texas. So there's our guys. There's the Wilkes brothers, Ferris Wilkes. So they're the ones funding the anti-Trump ads, supporting Ted Cruz. Really strange. Now let's get down to the doctrinal distinctions. Yahweh groups have several doctrinal distinctions that separate them from biblical Christianity. The first is the name of the Father and of Jesus, as the Assemblies of Yahweh report in their statement doctrine, quote, we affirm that it is necessary and most important to our salvation that we accept the revealed personal name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and the name of his son, Yeshua, the Messiah. So if you watch a lot of videos on YouTube, and certainly the ones on the transgender issue and the celebrities that I've covered, uh, you always hear these people saying Yahweh and Yeshua. Well, this is the reason why. Now, this is the most important point of this entire thing. They deny the doctrine of the Trinity holding that the Holy Spirit is, quote, a mighty power from the Heavenly Father and the Messiah dwelling within us so that we have the ability and strength to bring our lives into a state of perfection pleasing to our Heavenly Father. We find the Trinitarian doctrine to be foreign to the inspired scriptures. So there you go. Really, really strange stuff. You've got Trump, who is accused of being a Zionist, that would be probably the best term, and uh, Brother Nathaniel, actually a very good uh, video there by this anti-Semite Jew hater, (laughs) but uh, some interesting information. But then we find out that uh, the people who oppose Trump and support Ted Cruz are in this very, very strange sacred name movement, which is, I guess you could consider that to be anti-Semitic as well, because um, they're basically saying that they're the Jews and the Jews aren't the Jews. So it's it's a very, very confusing mess. Uh, Hopefully some of you can sort it out better than I can. Now let's go to the next story here. This is a really important story. Someone covered this uh, on the member site, and this is about uh, the story from... Uh, Vision Victory, Daniel, or Future Money Trends, all the names he uses here. I'm going to start it with the video from how to buy physical silver for cheap prices. I want you to note the ad that starts the video off. Rick Rule, Doug Casey, Marin Katusa, and Keith Newmeyer. All. So just think about that. All shareholders of one new gold stock making big headlines since its start last April. Acquiring gold for $5 to $10 per ounce on the ground, which is dramatically lower than the $50 to $100 per ounce on the ground other companies have been paying. To learn more about what hard asset investors are calling a mineral bank, visit futuremoneytrends.com slash invest right. Greetings and thank you for joining me at futuremoneytrends.com. I want to- so I just want you to notice that this is a guy that runs his own ads on his own videos. And now he's going to tell you how to buy silver for cheap prices. And he's going to tell you that people who tell you to buy um, semi-numies uh, are wrong and that you should buy the cheapest 100-ounce bar you can find. Now, let me show you a video here. This is a video from the same person from 2011, October 12th. This is long after the crash. In fact, the crash was May of 2011. We had a very dramatic drop in prices, but let's look and see what he's doing here. 
Greetings, and thank you for joining me on FutureMoneyTrends.com. We're here with Bradford Cook. He's the CEO of Endeavor Silver with an impeccable track record, a $750 million market cap, two operating silver mines, and a cash cost of silver less than $6. Bradford, thank you for being on the show with us today. Uh, my pleasure, Daniel. Bradford, if, if you could take some time to introduce yourself and introduce Endeavor to our audience. Uh, yes, by all means. I'm a professional geologist with some 35 years in the mining industry, uh, the last 20 years in the uh, running of public companies, and in around 2003, I founded a little company called Endeavor Silver with an idea to go to Mexico. Oh, so, and, uh, so keep that in mind that in 2003, uh, he formed Endeavor Silver. Now, I'm not going to put up the stock price, I don't have that one here, but the three that... Uh, he pumped in that video was uh, PAAS, uh, the First Majestic, and Endeavor Silver. Now, here's an interesting article from just a couple few weeks ago. Endeavor Silver is to slash 2016 output by over 25%. If you listen to that interview, I'll go ahead and link all this stuff in the video. Um, Endeavor Silver was around eight, nine, ten bucks during the interview. I think it's around a, a buck fifty right now. So let's look at some of these other companies that are promoted uh, in the video he just put out. We've got Pan American Silver. You can see that Pan American Silver is nine forty-two. Where was it in two thousand eleven? About forty bucks. Uh, we've got this AG Inter Interactive. This is the first Majestic. You can see that in 2011, around the top, First Majestic was about a $24, $23, $24 company. We're down around 4 bucks. I think the low was about 3 bucks. Um, so what does that tell you? Um, I'm, I'm not going to spell it out for you, but you should be able to figure it out for yourselves. Uh, we don't do, and let me mention that uh, I, I don't believe that the website was hacked. I think actually one of my computers was hacked and that was uh, something that I, I didn't figure out yesterday, but I think I've uh, gotten on top of it. Nobody's personal information was released, uh, but uh, we're going to give you an update when we have all the information about what happened. So the big question is, why do we have people like Daniel, I'm not picking on him, um, but you all know my track record. I've said for a very, very long time that you shouldn't waste your money on precious metal mining companies because uh, as long as the price of the precious metals is suppressed, then you're buying into something that's rigged because uh, the company isn't going to be able to make a profit. If you think about it like it's some other company, uh, any company you can imagine, whether it's a computer company or a car company, if the government itself is in the business of suppressing the product that you sell, uh, the price of the product you sell, then obviously you're in the wrong business. Now, you're going to have to decide for yourself why these people are so adamant about promoting mining companies. Uh, because I have warned you against them. Uh, Andy Hoffman has warned against them. He certainly hasn't been warning against them as long as I have. But I think you can see, uh, we'll go ahead and pull up the, the charts of some of these companies. And you can see that uh, there's just no performance. And there won't be any performance um, until the precious metals are no longer manipulated. And uh, that's unfortunately how some people make their money. And we'll talk to you next time.